Hi, it's Bob Shaw from Aspiration Images here. I'm just going to do a video on file management using the Hasselblad Focus software. Focus is a Hasselblad Royal processor and tethering software for Hasselblad cameras, and the Mac version can also be used for other cameras. I'll be using the Mac for this demonstration. Uh, it's intended to supplement the information in the Focus User Guide and Hasselblad YouTube videos. Um, my file management process is based on the Chase Jarvis workflow. If you haven't seen this YouTube video, then it's a bit old now, but still worth watching. Just Google Chase Jarvis Workflow. I keep all my files other than the operating system application on an external drive that's backed up using a time machine. Backup disk is rotated with another backup disk every two weeks and stored off site. The key of the Chase Jarvis Workflow is everything in your camera is stored in an originals folder. So here you see in the image library, there's an originals folder and also a live folder and a final folder. My storage drive is called Thunder 3 because it's Thunderbolt 3 drive. In the original folder, I have a folder for each year. Going right back. So let's go into 2023 and we see I have a folder for 2023 Canon, 2023 Asplad, 2023 iPhone and others. So in 2023 Hasselblad, I have uh, a single shot uh, to shoot taken on the, uh, uh, the 15th of the 1st, 2023, um, sure gathering, family gathering. Uh, so what we'll do is just look at a, an earlier one, go back to 2022, and you see there that uh, all the shoots uh, for that year are in there. They're all reverse dated, so uh, they're always alphabetical order. Or numerical order. All right, so let's put a card in and see how it all works. So I've inserted a card. It's popped up on the uh, on the desktop. And I'm just going to navigate to the folder with the images. And there we see uh, I've actually uh, been shooting with um, both both RAW and JPEG up activated, but that uh, that doesn't matter. Same process will apply. Um, so as you see, there are three FR files, my RAW files. So what I'm going to do is create a folder for my files that I'm going to import in the original folder on my hard drive. So I go into 2023 Hasselblad and I create a new folder and I'm going to call that 2023-February-09 nine underscore the first number or the number of the first file in my series on the card once I've done that I can now open focus Okay, so there's the images from the card. Uh, so in this case, uh, they start from B0022127 to 154. So you can select the images you wish to uh, uh, import. I normally import them all. Um, There's a little, uh, if you don't see the image of some reason, there's a little drop down menu. Show image types, and here you can see I've show 3F files or FFF files and 3FR files. Uh, if I tick the other, you'd also be able to see Canon files, etc. So I, don't, I never use that, so it's just 
if 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 and three if uh, false. Uh, you can select the images you wish to import, as I say, but uh, I generally just import all images. So I'm going to select all images and go import. And here we can select the destination for where I'm going to send my files. On the Thunderbolt 3, in the image library, in the originals, in 2023, Hasselblad, and that folder. Choose. Everything else I'll leave pretty much standard, standard adjustments, my contact info is all in there, copyright information, etc. I'm going to prefix each file number with the raw date. So it's just a preset I've created. So you can go, go into that use the edit command to add raw date underscore raw name, which I've done. And that gives you down here, you can see what the result's going to be. Uh, the reverse date and then the underscore uh, of the file name with FFF. So I'll just tick import and away we go. Now this um, can take some time, uh, if, if especially if you have a lot of files, because there's a lot happening. It's uh, the read-only Biometrics 3FR file is being converted to the writable with history processed FFF file and then compressed to save space. Once they're imported, you can edit them. You see they're all coming in now. Now we see a preview of all the images, of course. I want to see bigger ones. I can go in here and see the images. So there, it's all done now. So we can now rate them, export them, um, edit them, whatever we want to do. All of the above. So, for example, uh, we can turn on the, the highlights and shadows, and I can see here I've got some overexposure, so I can go in the adjust, and uh, I could use the recovery to, to bring those back. Uh, let's find another one. That's one. That one's way over. So... You can bring back quite a lot. This one here, I can put the shadows to lighten it up. But you know, basically, uh, I wouldn't worry about that image. I just go to a better one that I take it. So we can um, we can rate the images. So. We can use the keys 1 to 5 to rate them. So as, as I press the keys 1 to 5, I can, I can rate the images. I might give that one a 3, this one a 2, that a 1, etc. And I can also use the um, keys 6, 7 and 8 to give the traffic light ratings. So uh, you can do this in camera. I, I never do it in camera, but uh, uh, we could, for example, rate this one as a, as a good. Um, that one I could leave it as a um, as a normal one. Uh, this one, for example, I might say as a re reject. So I could give that a, a red light, etc. And then we could filter them either by uh, by the rating or I could just turn off the red ones and the red ones and then gone. So the rejected files you can reject. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just take them back to where they were. And you can use the, um, if you use a star rated, uh, that's saved into the metadata. And then if your image editing program uh, accepts, uh, re reads the metadata, then you can uh, 
you can open it, open Lightroom or Aperture or whatever the, the Aperture program is, uh, and it will show the, uh, the star rating. So let's say we give, we give that one a three. It's unrealistic, I'll just give it a one. Um, yeah, this is a shot by Tugger the Guard. All right, so um, let's just do a wild edit on an image just to, uh, we'll take the one here which was already overexposed. And let's say we're going to overexpose it even more. So that was uh, one image 132. So we'll look at 132. You can see there, if I wildly overexpose it, So it now looks like that. When I save the image, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check 132 and see, how, see if those changes have been saved to it. Uh, pretty much all, all I do in the adjustments area is just, just normally recover, um, you know, do highlights and shadows, and uh, perhaps do keystone correction and a few minor things. All right, so let's export all those images now um, so we can ex export them out as uh, as tiffs if we intended to print them uh, a lot of my work is just um, it's just web work uh, normally products and things like that so uh, I quite often just use jpegs um, and it's also a lot quicker so I'm going to edit those images and export them so we're going to go into a live folder. We're going to go live, and I've got it in the live folder. I've also got it, yeah, uh, the same arrangement. I'm going to create a new folder for these images 2023 02 09. I forget what the first image was. So we'll just say test. And we create, and I'm going to export JPEG full size. There we are. There's all our images. Once we export them, of course, any changes that we've made uh, are baked into the uh, into the files. But uh, our raw file, you can see, it's um, the one I the one I over overexposed uh, has has been saved as overexposed. But if I go back into focus and pull it right back. That file has now gone back to a more acceptable level. And if I exit focus, or any, any time I go to another image actually, it'll save that image. And it's gone back to uh, the way it was before. So that's pretty much focus. If we open the uh, images and say Lightroom, We import the images into Lightroom. 2023 Live. Under three. Image library. Live. 2023 Live. And that 2023 test. 
There we go, import. And there's our JPEG images, whatever we want to do with them. If we go to the originals, the FFF files, and import those, You'll note that the star ratings that I put in focus are already uh, in Lightroom. So quite often I, uh, I get my customers to rate the images as they're going along so they'll pick the, product, pick the shots they want uh, using focus mobile on iPad uh, and then you know, that makes it easy when I uh, export the, um, the images out of focus they're already in pre-rated by the customer. So if you um, if you use the ex exported file out of focus, you will get all the proprietary color management features like HNCS. If you use the FFF file, uh, then you won't get those features. I just mentioned also, you'll note that the um, Images on the card, the three FR images are 110 megabytes. The same image as an FFF is 84.4 megabytes. So passing it through focus, converting it from three FR to FFF uh, is is worthwhile, not just for all the features it gives you, but also the, the saving and space that it, causes, that, uh, creates. So that's about it. I hope that helps you on your Hasselblad journey.